Alright, welcome back everybody. This is going to be a video where I introduce an entirely new concept. Um, we've covered if statements and we've covered uh, a few different types of, of things so far. But before we move on, I think it's really important that I cover just all the different types of, of uh, statements that we're going to be frequently using throughout the course of our, or not, not so much statements, but the different data types that we're going to be using throughout the main part of this tutorial series. As you get towards the end, there's going to be a lot of stuff that I'm kind of pulling from here and there, and kind of trying to make work. So, um, without further ado, I'd just like to introduce each of them uh, really briefly, just to make sure that we have a good grasp on where we're going. Um, with that being said, I'm going to introduce a few different types of, um, of, of data types for us to be using in the future and hopefully we'll be clear on that as we go forward because from here we're going to be getting into for loops and nested for loops and it doesn't stay pretty from here on out it things get a little loopy pardon the pun okay so we're going to start off by introducing a few types of data that we haven't yet talked about we're going to talk about string, we're going to talk about boolean, and we're going to talk about um, char. Now string and boolean, as you can see, are, are slightly different color than our char or our int. Um, these hold a very specific type of data. Now char can hold any character that you can type on your keyboard, say I wanted to type a 1, that is not the same as an integer 1. That should be treated more as like a letter than as a number. And there are ways to convert them back and forth. And I think we'll get into that later on this lesson. Yeah, why not? We'll get into that later this lesson. Okay. Strings hold anything that we put in quotation marks. When we use C out, and we use the quotation marks, what we're actually doing is we're treating that stuff in the quotation marks as a string. So we can say hello world. Um, we'll say string, and all these need a name. So we'll say string i boolean j char k. And boolean really just holds, oh yeah, it can't do anything yet. Boolean holds a true or a false value. That's all it does. Um, oh, and that's because I didn't have a colon there. So, okay. Now, these three things are pretty clearly interesting. So, what I'm going to do is kind of show you the power of these three things to write a complex hello world program. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say uh, if j equals true and then I'm going to write in here another one if k equals 1 c out i. Now that looks complicated, and it is. But I'm showing you that even though these are, are characters and not numbers, actually, you know what, let's just call that an A for the sake of it. Because, you know, anybody can test if something equals one, but what does A really equal? And that's my point, is that this is testing just to see if it's character A, because that's what we've set it to. So when we run this, it should output hello world. So let's give it a run. Uh row. Oh, my bad. It's bool in C++. It's boolean in Java. My bad. And we need to actually include string, which is a library. 
Look at me getting all ahead of myself. So, okay, let's try this again. We're going to give that a run, and we get Hello World. My apologies about the confusion. It's really easy to confuse bool and boolean. It's one of my biggest gripes about knowing C++ and Java. So, okay, that just settles that real quick. I'm going to just kind of show you what we've covered as far as other data types go. Just to sum up, and I'll throw in comments here, string means, you know, this is literally what's in the quotation marks. Bool is simply true or false. And that's how you set it. Um, there's the way that it works is you can actually set it equal to 0, 1, true, or false. But in this case, 0 equals false, 1 equals true. So you're not really doing anything. But let's say that after we declare it true there, we just say false here. So j equals false. And then out here we go see out. Uh, you know what, let's make an if or an else. See out. Oops, false. And so we run it. And in this case, since we just set j to false, then even though k is true, the whole statement is false because it never gets to enter into this scope. So it never sees k is equal to a. And as a result, it never sees the C out of I, which is hello world. So in this case, it's false. Um, I'm just going to get rid of the false because I, I like you guys to see how it kind of falls through each of those things. So I'm going to keep that as the example at the end of this uh, episode. Now, before we go, I'm just going to remind you what each of the other types that we're going to be using regularly are concerns me that something just made noise. Okay, well, it wasn't anything important, I hope. Okay, we're going to have int. Um, let's just say m equals 0, or m equals 1. Int is just an integer number. Whole number. And that goes from negative 37, comma, um, I want to say 768, or no, 32, 768 to positive 32, 767. Now, that's the actual range. You can do higher than that based on your operating system and based on uh, the platform you run, but if you do go higher than these values, you are going to run into problems with really old compilers and operating systems, and you sacrifice interoperability and portability. Um, those words probably don't mean much to you yet, nor should they. Um, just if you have to use a big number, you're going to use what's called a long. I haven't really talked about longs yet, but longs can be pretty long. I mean, I, I'm pretty sure that that's an acceptable long right there. Um, use to store numbers bigger than an int. So that's pretty simple. And now we're going to talk about double. Um, actually, we'll do float. Uh, And in this case, all a float is, is a floating point number. And again, pretty simple. Um, it's That's just any number with a decimal point and something after it. And lastly, we have double. Uh, and what double is, is it's going to be a version of float, which can hold more than a float. So has is a float with double the storage 
face. Aside from that, I don't think we're going to be using too many things, and if we are, I'll talk about them more as we get to them. Those are going to be your basic primitives that we're going to be using throughout the remainder of these tutorials. Hopefully, that's it. Um, there might be cases where we use a more specialized container, but I really think that's going to just about do it. The only other thing I want to... No, I'm not going to mention that here. That's still a little far out. For now, familiarize yourself with these. Play around a little bit with them. Maybe write yourself a, a program. And I'm going to take the next video to sum up what we've covered in all the videos leading up to now. All right? Thanks for tuning in. This is Damien. Feel free to subscribe, ask questions, email me, shoot me a comment below. And I will see you next time.